the first talk is by Patrick Huer. Uh, Patrick is a member of the Académie des Sciences in uh, France. He was um, for many years director of the LADIX, the lab in um, Ecole Polytechnique and is now emeritus. Um, his best known research has been in the use of absolute and convective um, uh, instability concepts in linear and nonlinear dynamics, um, and notably in aerodynamic sound for generation, for example. S some of his early work was in collaboration with David Crichton, who succeeded Bachelor as Professor of Applied Mathematics in the AMTP, um, and he succeeded Bachelor as Chairman uh, and later President of Euromec. Yeah, that, well, David Crichton succeeded Bachelor and Patrick succeeded Crichton as President of Euromec uh, and is uniquely qualified to speak on uh, his topic, which is George Bachelor uh, and the founding of Euromec. So Patrick, over to you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tim, for this very nice introduction. So uh, what I would like to, to discuss today, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, no, what I would like to discuss today is how George Batcher uh, founded uh, Euromec uh, and uh, developed it into what it is today, one of the major actors uh, in the dissemination and exchange of research ideas in Europe. Uh, I will repeatedly mention the collective nature of this enterprise. So there are two, uh, two founders of Euromec. Uh, foremost, George Batcher, who uh, was a native from uh, Australia and uh, came to Britain in 1946 to work uh, with G.I. Taylor on turbulence. Uh, as we shall see, he would be uh, chairman of the Euromec committee uh, for a 23 year period uh, and played a vital role in the development of the society. Um, so uh, he was uh, already, by the time he became uh, chairman of the uh, committee, he, uh, he was very well known for his uh, research in turbulence. He had founded the uh, Department of Applied Mathematics and Theoretical Physics in uh, 1959. He has founded the Journal of Fluid Mechanics in uh, 1956. Uh, and he was uh, widely known and recognized in the um, fluid and solid mechanics communities um, in Europe, East and West. Remember this were the beginnings of the uh, Cold War uh, and it was essential to uh, preserve communications between East, the Eastern and Western parts of Europe. In fact, uh, George uh, uh, participated in some of the conferences organized by uh, Vladek Fishden on a biennial basis uh, so-called East Meet uh, West uh, conferences that were inf uh, very influential in maintaining the, the contacts between the two sides of Europe. Uh, he also was a very active in uh, IUTAM, in the International Union of Theoretical and Applied Mechanics. Uh, so he was the well-recognized, famous scholar uh, in turbulence who was ideally suited uh, to um, start uh, the Euromec committee, as uh, we shall see. Can I have this next slide, please? Next slide. Uh, the second founder of Euromec uh, was Dietrich Küchemann. Uh, Dietrich Küchemann may be uh, less well known uh, to some of us, uh, was a aerodynamicist in the uh, great uh, German engineering tradition. Uh, he, um, was, he worked, he got his PhD uh, with uh, Ludwig Brandl in Göttingen uh, before 1946 during the war, and he would become the secretary, uh, as we saw, she of, she of the Euromec uh, committee uh, during a 10 year period. Uh, so he got his PhD with uh, Ludwig Brandl and he did research on high speed aerodynamics uh, in uh, Göttingen uh, until 1946. In fact, he was the author of a well-known book, The Aerodynamic Design of Aircraft, uh, that was published in 1978. 
and a very influential book. Uh, that the latest edition of this book uh, dates uh, from 2013 and is published by the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. Um, so uh, in 1946, uh, right after the war, he came to the Royal Aircraft Establishment and was a, a scientist there. Uh, so, uh, as I said, uh, Dietrich Kischmann was really, uh, was really a, a very gifted uh, engineer uh, and uh, he was, uh, both, both of these individuals uh, were very complimentary. The uh, distinguished scholar uh, in turbulence and the uh, engineer in the, in the great German tradition. Um, so together, uh, they uh, founded Euromec. Uh, may I have the next slide, please? Uh, so what were the early efforts in uh, promoting European cooperation? So right after the war, uh, each individual country was pretty much uh, uh, operating within its uh, own borders, uh, concentrating on, uh, rec on reconstruction. But by the 1960s, um, colleagues started to uh, renew contacts across borders. Uh, and two individuals uh, were very influential uh, in bringing about this change. Uh, this was uh, Klaus Osvatic, a specialist in gas dynamics uh, from Austria, who was head of the of a research institute in aerodynamics, gas dynamics more precisely, uh, in Aachen. Uh, and uh, the second uh, person was uh, Vlodek Fisden, that you see portrayed here in this picture. Vlodek Fisden uh, was a Pole. Uh, he was a member of the Polish Academy of Science. And uh, he, uh, during, between the wars, he had spent some time in, uh, in Paris uh, in, at the Sorbonne. Uh, and uh, during the war, uh, he moved uh, to the uh, Royal Aircraft Establishment. Uh, in the 60s, he was already well known for organizing these biennial conferences um, in, uh, in fluid dynamics in Poland uh, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and um, he also was known at the Royal Aircraft Establishment uh, for, uh, for working on the, on the, actively working on the uh, research effort uh, war-related research effort. In fact, he solved uh, vibration problems uh, encountered by the hurricane fighter planes uh, on the Allied side uh, in, the North, in the North African campaign uh, that were equipped with 40 millimeter guns to, uh, uh, to counteract uh, German tanks. And uh, he was very instrumental in uh, solving this problem. And uh, he, uh, I, did, which had a very serious impact on the uh, outcome of the war. So um, in 1962, uh, Klaus Osvatic uh, and Dietrich Küchemann advocated the need to organize uh, small scale uh, colloquia, which would be uh, later on called Euromed colloquia, uh, on informal meetings on specialized topics in fluid dynamics. Um, and this, uh, this um, idea was very well received in Europe uh, by the Royal Society of London and uh, by the International Union of Theoretical Mechanics. And uh, uh, there were po very positive reactions from James Lighthill and uh, uh, Paul Germain in France, uh, among others. Uh, in 1964, uh, so, so these discussions were held between uh, Osvatic and, and uh, Kushuma. In 1964, um, the, at the Fluid Dynamics Conference in Elden, Poland, that I talked about earlier, uh, Rodek Fisden and George Batcher further pursued this idea and uh, emphasized uh, the need to involve both Eastern and Western Europeans. This was an important concern during this uh, Cold War period. Uh, may I have the next slide, please? So it is that on the uh, 12th, on the occasion of the 12th International Congress of Theoretical and Applied Mechanics uh, in 1964, um, uh, 12 scientists uh, from six different European countries 
uh, met on the invitation of uh, Dietrich Kuschelmann and George Batchelor to uh, evaluate the, the need for these uh, uh, Euromed colloquia uh, and to see if it would have support uh, of the community. Uh, uh, this, uh, these uh, discussions were uh, held over lunch at uh, the uh, building that you see in Munich here, which is a cultural center for artistic and uh, cultural events, uh, which is uh, popular to this day. Uh, and uh, they decided, they were very much in favor of the idea of these uh, small scale colloquia. Uh, and uh, it was uh, agreed to have an interim committee, an interim Euromed committee, that would supervise and oversee uh, the selection and the uh, evaluation of these uh, colloquia uh, on um, specialized topics uh, in aerodynamics. And this interim committee uh, uh, was later on the first uh, Euromec committee uh, of the, the Euromec, European Mechanics Committee. Uh, next slide, please. What were these uh, small scale uh, colloquia? What was the idea uh, the, uh, of, of George Batchelor and Dietrich Küchemann? Uh, they had to be on specialized topics in uh, fluid mechanics, lively topics uh, that were of current interest in the community. Uh, they would involve about 50 uh, invited participants that were, were invited not on the basis of being representatives of uh, research organizations, but therefore their active uh, work in the field. And uh, uh, one had to be sure that the junior scientists were also invited. It was on an invitation basis only. The duration of the uh, of these, uh, of these uh, colloquia was three uh, to four days uh, with plenty of time for uh, interactions between the participants and for knowing each other personally. Uh, there would be no proceedings and um, there would, one would make sure that participants would uh, uh, be from both Eastern and Western Europe. Um, next slide, please. So it is that the first Euromed colloquium was uh, organized in 1965 uh, by uh, Rudolf Wille, who was the head of a, research, of a research institute called the Erman Fuddinger Institute at the Technical University in Berlin. This uh, first Euromed colloquium was uh, organized in close collaboration with George Batchelor and uh, Dietrich Küchermann. Uh, about 38 participants uh, from nine European countries uh, uh, attended and uh, according to the final report that uh, was published by Euromec, uh, it initiated a series that will benefit the advancement of knowledge. Uh, so on the picture here, you see the uh, first, the three organizers waiting uh, for participants to arrive in Berlin. So you have uh, Rudolf Wille, on the left, you have is a researcher who is head, the head of the Hermann Fertig Institute uh, in Berlin, his uh, young assistant, Hans Fernot, who would play a vital role uh, in Euromec right from colloquium number one, and Dietrich Küchemann, uh, waiting for participants to arrive. Um, and the, the, uh, the, until today, about more than 600 uh, Euromec colloquia uh, have been organized uh, with about 10 to 15 colloquia being selected uh, each year. So uh, it, was, it, it has been a very uh, successful way of, uh, um, of developing exchanges in the community uh, in Europe. Uh, may I have the next slide, please? So the first period of the Euromec committee um, was uh, during the first 10 years, uh, we had the, the chairman was uh, George Batcher uh, and uh, the secretary was Dietrich Küchemann. Uh, he stayed being secretary in, uh, for about uh, 10 years. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he passed away prematurely uh, in 1976 and had to uh, step down. Um, so in this picture here, you see the uh, 
uh, on the occasion on one of these uh, uh, committees, uh, a friendly discussion between George Bachelor and, and Rudolf Wille uh, in Berlin. Um, so the Euromed committee uh, was uh, in charge of evaluating primarily, met once a year and was in charge of evaluating uh, Euromed colloquia, uh, selecting them from uh, proposals received from uh, the community. That was the essential uh, job of uh, the committee. Uh, may I have the next slide, please? So, um, as I said, uh, uh, Dietrich Küchmann uh, passed away uh, too early, uh, by far, and uh, his successor uh, on the, um, the, the, the his successor. I think there is. This is the wrong one. Uh, may I have the previous slide, please? Yeah, mention it if you know. Uh, so uh, yes, this is correct. Thank you. Uh, so the secretary who took over from Dietrich Küchmann uh, was Hans Fernolz, who had been uh, involved in the uh, in Euromax since the beginning, um, and this was a, a glorious period for um, uh, Euromax, um, which is recollected in in the recollections of a Euromax old timer, uh, written by Len van Weingarten. Uh, from Eindhoven. Uh, so in his, uh, in his recollection, he states that uh, in those days, uh, George Batchelor was the omnipresent uh, chairman of Euromac. Uh, and in inviting you uh, to participate in the Euromac committee, he made you feel that you were about to engage in one of the most important scientific events in your entire scientific career. Uh, they were about, in those days, um, between uh, 20 to 25 uh, Euromed proposals, Euromed colloquium proposals received each year uh, that were painstakingly discussed uh, during two days, uh, two full days, in which uh, George Batcher would uh, meticulously treat each proposal and uh, go from about uh, 25 to 35 proposals to 10 to 15 proposals that were uh, ultimately accept, uh, accepted uh, as the main outcome of the uh, Euromed committee. Um, uh, may I have the next slide, please? So uh, by 1987, um, George had served uh, 23 years as uh, chairman of the committee and uh, he announced uh, that he would resign from being uh, chair of the Euromed committee as of 1987. This was by no far, no, no means, uh, the, no, no, the end of the involvement of, uh, of uh, George Batchelor in the affairs of uh, Euromed. Uh, he would remain very, very active until uh, 1995 uh, as we shall see. So uh, his involvement was not limited to these uh, first 23 years. The person who took over is another uh, Cambridge colleague, uh, if the magnanimous, super active David Crichton, with, uh, I had the, uh, the privilege of uh, working uh, with him uh, at an early stage in, uh, in my career. Um, and the secretary uh, in that period, the secretary uh, became Ben Grunberg from uh, Scandinavia. Uh, David Crichton uh, uh, was a very uh, dynamic personality. He was a famous uh, aeroacoustician, as stated by Tim earlier on. Uh, and uh, he would uh, bring uh, Euromed to the next stage. And as I said, uh, George Batchelor was still stayed on the committee. He was a very active member on the committee. And he, as we shall see, he played a, a, a great role in uh, changing the nature of the society from being a, of the committee, from being a committee to uh, being a society. Uh, may I have the next slide, please? So, uh, by the mid-1980s, uh, uh, Euromec uh, stepped out of its uh, uh, first aim, which was the, uh, uh, the holding of uh, 
Euromed Colloquia to venture into the wider organization of uh, conferences of uh, what would be called Euromed conferences. The first uh, Euromed conference was held in turbul on turbulence in Lyon in 1986, uh, hosted by Geneviève Contebello, uh, and uh, was a success. Uh, the um, first uh, fluid mechanics uh, conference was held in Cambridge uh, in 1991, uh, and uh, in the, on the same year, uh, the solid, first solid mechanics uh, conference was organized uh, uh, in Munich. Um, so uh, this brought about a need to transform the Euromec committee into a full-blown uh, Euromec society, namely going from a Euromec committee in charge of colloquia only to uh, a Euromec society which would be in charge of uh, colloquia and uh, conferences of a, a broader scope. And each uh, conference, the idea was, would be uh, supervised by a standing committee of about 10 colleagues um, that, and they would be held on a regular uh, time basis. Um, so the, the uh, secretary, I forgot to mention that the, uh, the, the secretary Secretary of the uh, committee in that period was Bengt Lundberg, who would stay on as the uh, secretary uh, with uh, uh, David Crichton as the chairman. Uh, and uh, the transformation, uh, the, the Euromec Society was a uh, quite a successful uh, venture. Um, in, uh, so you see that the term of David Crichton is until 1997. In 1995, uh, George Batchelor, who had uh, actively participated in the transformation of the society, in fact, with David Crichton and Hans Fernholz, uh, he had established the statutes of the society, and he had also supervised the organization of the uh, fluid mechanics conferences. So he kept uh, playing a major role. But in 1995, uh, he uh, decided to step down of all his responsibilities within Euromac. Uh, and this was the end of his uh, active involvement in the affairs of the, uh, of the society. Um, next slide, please. Um, unfortunately, in uh, 1996, uh, uh, David Crichton fell uh, very seriously ill and he had to uh, step down as a chairman, or as the president of the society. Uh, and Hans Fernholz, who had uh, uh, been involved uh, since the beginning in the affairs of Euromec, uh, stepped in and became uh, the president. And uh, David uh, stayed as a vice president. Um, Hans Fernholz enrolled uh, Mila Okrulik as the secretary, so the first uh, active involvement of solid mechanics colleagues within the society uh, was uh, initiated and it was uh, very important. Um, unfortunately, uh, David Crichton uh, passed away in uh, uh, the year 2000 uh, and uh, so did uh, George Batchelor um, within one month of each other. And the year 2000 was really a very hard uh, uh, a very hard year for uh, European mechanics uh, uh, and uh, this uh, th this change was was uh, felt very strongly by, by the community. Um, so may I have the next slide please? Um, so the uh, Hans Fernholz uh, completed what had been achieved uh, in the organization of the of conferences and there were five series of conferences that were uh, organized on a steady basis that are listed in this uh, uh, in this slide here um, uh, as i said uh, george was very much involved in the establishment of the fluid mechanics conference so these conferences were broad in scientific in, in scientific scope uh, held on a regular basis uh, and uh, typically they would involve between 150 and 
to 600 participants. The Solid Mechanics Conference, in fact, gathered up to, uh, has gathered up to 1,200 participants. That's been very successful in attracting uh, the community. Uh, and there were, as in for colloquia, there were uh, no proceedings uh, uh, of, for, for the, the, this uh, series of conferences. And each conference was supervised by a standing committee of uh, 10 members. Um, so you see here uh, discussing uh, Hans Fernholz uh, during the first European Turbulence Conference between Geneviève Contebello in Lyon uh, and Julian Hunt uh, having a lively uh, discussion, uh, which was which is typical of the atmosphere in numeric uh, meetings. Uh, and uh, under the term of uh, Hans Fernholz, uh, one uh, significant, very significant change was the introduction of, of awards, as uh, we shall see in the next uh, slide, please. So these uh, Euromec awards consisted of uh, three different uh, types. Uh, first, the uh, Fluid and the Solid Mechanics Prize to organize uh, outstanding lifelong achievements in the discipline. And um, uh, fellows, uh, about uh, a little bit on the, uh, on the American pattern, recognized contributions in, in the field. Uh, they were uh, awarded on the occasion of the conferences, the Fluid Mechanics Conference and the, the Solid Mechanics Conference, and they are still awarded. Uh, and uh, the third award was for young scientists to, to, uh, to recognize the uh, outstanding oral representations at the major conferences. You see the picture of uh, John Willis here, who was the uh, uh, president, the uh, the recipient of the Solid Mechanics Prize, uh, a Cambridge colleague at that time, uh, and Cambridge has been very well uh, recognized as it should uh, by being awarded three uh, three uh, prizes. Uh, Keith Moffat was uh, uh, the first uh, fluid mechanics uh, prize holder, uh, followed by uh, John Hinch and then John Willis, uh, John Willis in, uh, in solid mechanics. Um, so uh, this is uh, almost uh, the end of my presentation. I should say that, um, may I have the next slide, please? That uh, a lot of the things that I've been saying are inspired by a book that uh, Hans Fernholz uh, published uh, and which is available on the uh, Euromec uh, website. Uh, on the founding of the society uh, until the year 2000 with appendices uh, by, by Lynn van Weingarten and by Mila Okrulik. Uh, this has been a very useful document in uh, preparing this talk. Uh, I should also say that uh, Euromec is a, presently a very vibrant uh, organization. It is uh, 5,000 active members strong. Uh, its present president uh, is Margiers of Eindhoven, a solid mechanician, and this is very important in bringing a uh, balance between fluid and solid mechanics, and we will be uh, very careful to preserve this balance in future years. Um, so Euromec continues as a, uh, as a successful society uh, uh, for the exchange of ideas in Europe uh, without undue flag waving, which is very important. And uh, in uh, following the uh, collective spirit, which was instilled by George Batchelor. I thank you very much for your attention. Well, thank you very much, Patrick, uh, for sharing with us your memories and uh, the history of Euromec, which continues, as you said, to be a remarkably successful society. May I add a comment, please, Tim? Please do. Uh, one, of, one of the major ideas in, in, uh, in Euromec, you know, as in Euromec, in, on the fluid mechanics side, has been very recently, has been recently to, to be patterned uh, according to what is done in the US uh, in the American Physical Society yearly meeting uh, in November, uh, which has been very successful in uh, attracting uh, scientists, not only from the US, but also from Europe uh, on a yearly basis. And I know one of my efforts has been to 
encourage the same type of organization on the European side. In fact, uh, such a venture was attempted uh, some years ago, which didn't, wasn't uh, ultimately approved. Uh, and I would like to, to advocate uh, the need to further develop uh, European co cooperation in fluid dynamics, particularly uh, patterned after what the American Physical Society uh, meeting is. And we have some, some further steps to take to, to bring it to the level of quality and uh, exchange of ideas brought about by the APS meeting. Thank you. Thank you. That's very welcome.